a gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, coming back at you with episode 36 of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. Today is May 5th, 2020. Now, we missed a few of the vlogs uh, over the weekend. Last regular one was on Friday. Saturday, we were shooting the special 30-minute eccentrics episode, which was uh, broadcast at the How Weird World's Fair on Sunday. We posted it as part of our vlog yesterday. And of course, on Sunday, we welcomed our special weekend guest, as we do every weekend, the Countess Lola Montez of Lansfield. So therefore, today, instead of regularly Monday, is catch-up day. We're gonna catch up. Got a lot to cover today. Some very important events. First of all, a happy Cinco de Mayo to all who celebrate it. We'll come back to that tale in just a moment and how it relates back to me, which it does. But let's start off with some San Francisco history. It was on this date, uh, sorry, May 3rd, rather, 1851, that the Great Fire, one of six fires that destroyed San Francisco from December of 1849 to June of 1851, devastated our city. And those uh, fires were mainly started by a group from Australia, a gang, called the Sydney Ducks. Quite a story there. If you'd like to learn more about uh, the Great Fires, the Sydney Ducks, and the murder, mayhem, and destruction that they, um, they ens that ensued with their time here, uh, I advise you to read either Herbert Asbury's Barbary Coast, a great book, or Black Fire, both of which are excellent. And then on May 4th, 1850, we had another fire. It was the second one. So uh, May's not a very good month for San Francisco, apparently. It was on May 5th uh, of 1850 that Edward Moybridge uh, demonstrated his zoo gyroscope. And uh, that's uh, an early precursor to motion pictures. Of course, it was financed by Leland Stanford to settle a bet as to whether or not all four of, the, of a horse's uh, feet are off the ground when it's running. And of course, Moybridge did prove that. And of course, today is also the anniversary of Cinco de Mayo. And we have our mayo right here. No sink, but we have the mayo. Well, you know, it's very celebrated here in the U.S., although it is a Mexican holiday. Uh, it's kind of a minor holiday there, is my understanding. But what it actually commemorates is the anniversary of the Battle of Puebla, uh, also called the anniversary of, uh, oh, I got that already, the Battle of Puebla, a uh, holiday celebrated in parts of Mexico and the United States in honor of a military victory in 1862 over the French forces of Napoleon III. I had something to do with that, you know, because the reason that I was the protector of Mexico was to rid Mexico of French influence and the battle on this day started that process and we are very proud of that. So happy Cinco de Mayo. Well, let's get into some more of the events that happened on this day in history. Uh, May 3rd, 1936, San Francisco native and New York Yankee Joe DiMaggio makes his major league debut, getting three hits. Uh, 1937, Margaret Mitchell wins the Pulitzer Prize for her novel, Gone with the Wind. 1948, the first broadcast of the CBS Evening News, making it the longest running network news show in the US. May 3rd, 1971, the Nixon administration arrests 13,000 anti-war protesters in three days. And of course, yesterday was the most unfortunate anniversary of the massacre at Kent State, part of the protests of that time. 1978, May 3rd, the first unsolicited bulk commercial email, spam, is sent by a digital equipment corporation marketing representative to every ARPANET address on the West Coast. Well, happy birthday, spam, yes. May 4th events include the 1878 uh, showing of the first time of Thomas Edison's phonograph. 
1932, gangster Al Capone enters Atlanta Penitentiary, convicted of income tax evasion. Of course, he was later incarcerated at our own Alcatraz Penitentiary. 1944, the movie Gaslight, uh, starring an 18-year-old Angela Lansbury, makes its premiere. It's, uh, she's 94 now. Wow, still with us. One of the last of the golden age of Hollywood, if not the last. Well, there's a trivia question for everyone today. Who from the real golden age of Hollywood is still around? Leave your answer in the comments below. We'll talk about them tomorrow. The first Grammy Awards were presented on May 4th, 1959. Winners that day are Perry Como and Ella Fitzgerald. 2018, May 4th, California overtakes Great Britain to become the world's fifth largest economy. May 5th, 1260, Kublai Khan, grandson of Genghis Khan, becomes the ruler of the Mongol Empire. 1891, Music Hall, Carnegie Hall, opens in New York. Tchaikovsky is the guest conductor. Does anyone know how to get to Carnegie Hall? 1908, the Great White Fleet of the U.S. Navy arrives in San Francisco. 1925, John T. Scopes is arrested for teaching evolution in Tennessee. 1944, Mahatma Gandhi is released from prison. Oh, skipped over one. 1941, the first modern perfume, Chanel No. 5, is released by fashion designer Coco Chanel. And in 1949, TV station KGO, Channel 7, in San Francisco, begins broadcasting. Births, May 3rd, former Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir and everybody's grandmother. 1903, Bing Crosby, the singer. 1906, Mary Astor, who starred in the Maltese Falcon. 1919, the great folk singer and activist Pete Seeger. 1933, James Brown. Did anyone ever take him to the bridge? I hope so. 1943, another singer, Frankie Valli. 1935, gadget maker, Ron Popeil. It slices, it dices, it makes hundreds of julienne fries. The only tears you'll cry are tears of joy. 1961, birth date of Joe Murray of Rocco's Modern Life, one of our favorite cartoons. Uh, May 4th, birthdays include Audrey Hepburn and Keith Haring, a particular favorite artist of ours. May 5th, the founder of communism, writer of the Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx. 1915, rather, Alice Faye, American singer, uh, sang a most unfortunate song, though. Hello, Frisco, hello. Hello, don't say that word. 1926, Ann B. Davis, of course, of the Bob Cummings Show and the Brady Bunch. 1942, Tammy Wynette. We'll shout out to Leslie Jordan on that one today. And 1943, Sir Michael Palin. 1988, Adele, the singer. Adele, please move on. Get over it. Please. Great songs, but get over it. Deaths today include the first transsexual, Christine Jorgensen, who was a resident of Laguna Beach for many years. 2007, Wally Schirra, one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts. May 4th, Mo Howard of the Three Stooges, last of the Three Stooges to die. 1984, Bob Clampett, who we know as a Warner Brothers animator and also the creator of Beanie and Cecil. A Bob Clampett cartoon. Nine, oh, 2009, we lost Dom DeLuise on May 4th, night, May 5th, 1821. Napoleon Bonaparte, another emperor. Uh, we also, let's see, it was said that he uh, died of stomach cancer in exile on the island of St. Helena, but arsenic poisoning has been a rumor for many, many years. It's not easy being an emperor, especially a former one. And in 1982, the great Bilk himself, Bret Hart. Well, that about wraps it up for today. I see we've gone almost 10 minutes. Tomorrow will be a little bit shorter, but uh, we had a lot of ground to cover. Until we speak again, stay safe, stay inside. If you're going outside, wear a mask. 
be kind to each other. We've seen some terrible news in the last few days of people not wanting to wear their masks. Uh, a guard at a dollar store was murdered because he asked somebody to wear a mask. And then there's the gentleman, I believe in Michigan, when asked to wear a mask, wiped his nose on the store clerk sleeve who asked him to wear the mask. These are troubled times, my friends. Don't be stupid. Stay alive. Until we speak again, a gracious good day.